I think we have started streaming from what I recall of how to run a live stream here on YouTube. It's been quite a while, so uh, for those of you guys who are new or tuning in for the first time, hi! I'm Joelle, and I do these live streams every now and then just to update you guys on my life, on ministry school here at BSSM that I'm in, um, and it's been way too long, and I just wanted to update and chat. This is super spontaneous. I wasn't planning on doing this, so I don't really anticipate anyone popping by to say hello, but this is super quick before class. I just actually wanted to let you guys know some things and uh, update you on what has been going on. Um, first, oh, I should, like, post on social media, on Facebook and stuff, let you guys know that I'm live, because I'm supposed to do that every now and then. Um, how do I do this again? Here on Twitter, I'm live streaming about BSSM. Come watch. How enticing is that for a tweet? <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's been a long time. I kind of stopped live streaming after, I want to say after Christmas-ish was when I last kind of stopped doing these little updates. I started out really strong at the beginning of the year because it was something that I really worked into my daily, well, weekly routine of just updating on what God's been teaching me while I'm here at ministry school and all of that. But um, things just got really busy, honestly, and um, I started to get involved in a lot more here at BSSM. I started to um, just like try to engage more, I think, with my community, which is why I was less like on YouTube, less on the live stream. And for Wu, what are we? What do you mean by leaving? So we are facing the last ten weeks of my program, which is pretty crazy considering that this was an entire year. This was like an entire year of my life being here at BSSM. Um, so that kind of leads me into just like what has been going on lately. Uh, for example, we are in the middle of deployment week, which is a week where they basically kind of prep us to go back home or wherever it is that we're heading out um, after BSSM. So for me, that would be going back to Dartmouth, which is uh, crazy and exciting, um, but definitely going to be a bit of a shock coming from environment as healthy and as wonderful as BSSM and going to the very stressful competitive environment of Dartmouth. Um, but I am really excited. I miss my Dartmouth friends like crazy and uh, I get to go visit them during Green Key which will be so so fun just because uh, it'll be a really nice time where all the 19s will be back on campus because right now a lot of um, people in my grade are out all over the world interning or studying abroad or whatever. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of exciting and a little nerve-wracking and kind of what I want to update you guys about. Just, like, what what have I been learning at BSSM? Like, what has it been like? Uh, I know second-year applications are now out, so a lot of people are, a lot of people in my grade, like Lydia, my roommate, and all of that, and all of them are now applying for second year since it is a three-year program in total. Um... And then there's a lot of people applying for first year. So we have some friends who are coming for first year, which is awesome. And if anyone from first year or who's going to be in first year is watching this, um, I'm hoping to do a Q&A at some point um, for BSSM just because I've been getting a lot of questions about like housing and the application and just what it's like. So if that'd be helpful, I'll do a QA and a and you guys can comment questions down below or whatever it might be. Um, actually, I'll add that to the title just so it's... A little more apparent that you guys can ask questions um, but uh, yeah it's it's been a really good time so I guess sort of recapping zooming back to around uh, Thanksgiving Christmas time when I kind of stopped live streaming as much that was a pretty crazy awesome time um, I was traveling a lot which was why I kind of stopped live streaming and also just focusing on really uh, refining my content but seriously, for like the months of January and February, I was gone like every weekend or every other weekend, which made it a lot harder to film nice little update videos or live streams and stuff like that. Um, so you guys probably saw that I went to Sundance in January, which was an amazing experience meeting so many wonderful people in the industry um, who just yeah, have really strong ethics and morals, and they're just fantastic people who are super creative, but also wanted to 
um, have some sort of social impact with their creative work, which I was super inspired by, um, and I got to help, um, you know, run events for them and whatnot, and that was a ton of time, and that was just, like, a ton of fun. Um, and then in February... Oh, another thing that happened in January was I actually went to this thing called the Single Life Workshop, which is run by a ministry here at Bethel. Um, I know a bunch of you guys are probably like, you're not single, Joel. <laughs> like, you have a boyfriend that you post about, like, annoying amounts. Um, but that was actually, it's just like a, a relationship workshop. So that's something that I've been learning about a ton here at Bethel, is just how to have, like, a healthy relationship. Like, what do kingdom relationships look like? What did God intend for relationships to look like? And that has been fascinating because I just realized how much we settle for, like, how much we... Like cut our uh, like sell ourselves short of what it could look like to have a really awesome and healthy relationship. Um, so I was very inspired hearing um, the talks that they give during like Purity Week, which is a big week all about relationships and sexuality and purity. Um, and then the Single Life Workshop, just saying like, yo, like these are some tools that we can give you to have really awesome, healthy relationships where both people are empowered. Um, as individuals and therefore can benefit each other's lives and the world around them and that's obviously you know what I want for my relationships um, and then um, yeah and since then we've also had a week um, earlier on in February called I forget what it was called it was just like, oh, it was called Sex and Culture Week, and that was just all about sexuality, which I know you guys are probably like, why do you talk about this so much at, like, Bethel? Um, and that's because um, something that they really teach here at BSSM is that the church has been so silent about sex and sexuality, and they've left sort of, they've left kids kind of figure it out on their own, which has obviously led to a lot of, like, confusion and just, like, unhealthy like relationships and lifestyles and stuff like that and they're like the church needs to be more vocal about it because like schools are not really educating kids on it families are afraid to like have the talk or whatever and talk about how you embrace your sexuality in a positive way that it's not a dirty or shameful thing and that like god made it beautiful like god made sex like can you just just acknowledge the fact that god made sex to be a good and healthy thing within the context of marriage that's supposed to be wonderful and beautiful and um you're not supposed to be ashamed of talking about that uh and even if like you do stray away and have sex outside of the confines of what the bible like says that it should be like you don't shame that person and ostracize that person like you love them unconditionally as god loved us because not none of us um are perfect like we all have like Obviously, we've all, like, stumbled in whatever ways, and we can't judge people's temptations um, because we always think that our temptation is the hardest one to deal with and that other people don't deal with stuff like that. But it is hard, and you need to have grace for people. Um, sorry, I'm, like, just now paying attention to the chat box. Uh, okay, I'm not going to talk about Twitch because I don't know anything about Twitch. And what is a, a Gibe? Gibe? I hope that means that... I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, what is the biggest thing you've learned in Bethel? Another question is, Bethel talk a lot about marriage. Bethel does talk a decent, about, a decent amount about marriage because they talk about how um, how your marriage is supposed to be a reflection of your relationship with God um, and how intimacy is supposed to be this really awesome and holy thing. Um, and they kind of put it in a much more enticing way than I think our society puts it, where normally it's kind of like, oh, like, you're tied down, like, shucks, like, they're, you, you're fun, your youth just died a little bit. Uh, and they're like, no, marriage should be, like, the next chapter and opening up all these new opportunities of being able to engage and relate with someone and have a really safe and healthy relationship that you'll never, ever be able to replicate with anyone else. Um, and the biggest thing I've learned about uh, at Bethel is that's hard because... I've, I feel like I've learned so, so much, but I think it's a large part of it has just been um, getting closer to God, like spending quiet time with God, like understanding how to worship, like how in my heart to posture myself to worship God. And um, I think I used to be really afraid of like sacrificing things for God, being like, okay, I'm comfortable saying I'll lay all this down for you, God, because I didn't trust that he was going to take care of me. Like I didn't trust that that was... A, a wise decision but now I'm like no like I really ha I'm I mean I'm continually on the journey of understanding this better but 
for the meantime at least, I think I have a much better understanding of the sovereignty of God than I did before, where I didn't think that I could rely on him. And now I'm like, actually, if I believe that God is the God of the universe, then I should 100% be putting all my eggs in that basket because what other basket could compare to the God who made everything, takes care of everything, and loves me like a daughter, you know, unconditionally. So that was a big, big breakthrough. Um, and, uh, okay, and woo, I'm just not going to acknowledge those comments. Uh, if you don't want to hear me talk about what I'm learning at Bethel, then you can sign off, you know? Um, and Monica asks, are you not finishing out the rest of the year and why does something happen? Oh no, I am. Okay, this is another thing I wanted to make this video about is that I am finishing out the rest of the year. Um, I stopped making as many vlogs about like school itself just because, okay, for a number of reasons. One was because I've been traveling so much uh, on weekends, uh, going home, going to Sundance, going visit Sean, all that stuff. Um, but I am, I'm still here. Like if you follow me on uh, social media, like my Instagram and stuff like that, you'll see that like I'm still doing the exact same thing I've been doing this entire year. I just haven't been like making as many videos about like school itself just honestly because for the visual aspect it's very boring it, it, it's the same routine every day classes worship all of that it's the same thing as it's been um since the beginning so i didn't want to bore you guys with saying with just showing like my daily routine time after time after time um but i am 100 percent still here still learning um i'm actually really excited we are going on missions trips beginning of April, so excited to announce I'm going on a missions trip to South Korea, which will be super, super awesome, just with timing, with like the Olympics, and um, just everything that's happening between North and South Korea. I don't know how informed you guys are about the politics going on there, but it's a very exciting time, and uh, yeah, so that should be super awesome, and I've been trying to gear up, I've been trying to learn some Korean to prep me for that trip. Um, but yeah, so that's a really fun thing that happens towards the end of the year. Um, and oh, Monica says, I got accepted next year for next year. Do you have any tips for me? What should I expect? Oh my gosh, congrats. That's so awesome that you're going to be at Bethel next year. Um, it is super awesome. I would say best tips are, especially for the beginning is when it's probably hardest, just you're like trying to meet people and you're trying to like find out what God has for you. I would say just like number one tip is just to like not worry. Obviously, it's a lot easier said than done, but to like trust God with everything, that you're going to meet the right people, that you're going to be put in the right revival group, in the right city service, in the right uh, AMTs and tracks and all of those classes. Um, and that, yeah, just like really take the year to spend time with God, to like in any, in any, um, aspects like don't worry about missing out on what God's have, like on what God has for you, but, um, just remember to stay focused on God, despite like the hype of different speakers, of different things going on in school that like really at the end of the day, what you're there for is God. You're not just there for certain speakers or certain famous worship leaders and stuff like that. Like everything is meant to gear you, to gear you towards the Father, you know, Jesus and um, Holy Spirit. So that is just probably the best thing that you'll get out of this year is learning how Everything kind of points to God, and you can find God in every situation, in every relationship. Um, and, yeah, and just to take advantage of everything here. Like, there's so many fun classes and so many cool people. And, like, just now I'm meeting more and more people that I love in my revival group and all of that. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been – it's like an overflowing resource of people and goodness that is really fun. Um, and then Gibe says, my, well, my real name is Giverson. I love Bethel because you guys can talk about the hard topics, for example, homosexuality and stuff like that. I love Ben Fitzgerald and Dylan Long. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, Bethel really does go for everything. Like they, they talked about sex so much. I was like, I've never heard sex so much in a church before. And I was shocked, but it was so helpful. Um, just to be like, this is what the Bible actually says, you know, it's good to finally talk about it. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ben Fitzgerald actually came and spoke at uh, at school, and it was like the most like convicting, like like intense service ever, where he just broke off shame and like fear of man for people because he's a crazy awesome evangelist, um, and that like released so much like 
so much like change in the atmosphere of the students and the attitudes of people just being like, yeah, like I really shouldn't be ashamed of who I am and what I believe. And my city service um, or like community service thing that goes off to San Francisco and does like street ministry, which I've logged at least once or twice on here. Um, we had a trip right after Ben Fitzgerald spoke and it was so much easier and so much more enjoyable because everyone was like, yeah, I'm fired up from Ben Fitzgerald talking about like the conviction of just really wanting to share the heart of God, which is the heart of love with people and not being afraid of, you know, not being afraid of scaring people, not being afraid of what people think of us. Um, and just really being able to like show people love and not be like, oh, is it weird that I'm like super nice to someone? Like, okay, maybe it's weird that you're nice, but people need a little extra love in their days. So um, like, why not share that? And uh, Gibe says, so I'm from Sweden. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I have a few friends from Sweden here. And I know some of the guys who went to Bethel from Sweden. That's so fun. Um, it's awesome that you share your, your journey through YouTube. Oh, thank you. I know it's a lot of fun to share what goes on through YouTube. Um, and oh, questions about the ring oh, in the back. That's just my ring light. I film with that every now and then, but my my space is small, so that's where it uh, lives. And Monica says, thank you. You've been kind of nervous because of money and etc. So are you able to do work and go to school or is school too overwhelming? And thank you for taking the time. Oh, of course. Um, and most people work while they're here. They have like a part-time job. There's a bunch of cafes, coffee shops, restaurants that people will work in. Um, and it's very, very doable to work and have school. The biggest thing though is if you have a car um, just or are living in a place that's close to where you're working because a lot of students don't have cars and that makes it harder just to get between work and school. But most people have jobs. Like most people are working part-time at least um, to pay their way and whatnot. And it's, I would say it's super doable. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just be proactive about getting a job from the beginning though because a lot of people like put it off and they kind of scramble to find a job later on when they need money for missions or something like that. Um, so just like work ahead of time. Um, and okay, unfortunately, guys, I think I got to head out to go to school, actually. But thank you so much to everyone who's dropped by. Just to say hi for this quick little live stream. And I hope anyone who's watching this later um, gets a better sense of what's going on with me. Um, the reason why I say we're leaving soon is that it's deployment week. So they're, like I said, they're teaching us how to be sent off into the world. So that's kind of like the mindset that I'm starting to get into, knowing that this year is coming to a close with only a couple weeks. We leave very beginning of May is when we're done. Um, so it's sort of just coming a lot closer than I expected, but it's been an amazing time and it's been such a joy to share this all with you guys. So I'm going to try to do better at live streaming, just casually like things like this, um, just to share kind of like my experiences and how I'm going through these last couple months here at Bethel. Um, and yeah, uh, again, for any first years who are have questions or whatever, who are just hoping to learn more about BSSM, uh, leave questions down below and I will hopefully do a Q&A if I get enough questions. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you to everyone who stopped by. Thank you, Monica, for that sweet message. Um, definitely praying for you guys too, especially those coming into um, first year, next year. Uh, but yeah, I love you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already for more updates and stuff like this. And I love you and I'll see you in the next one.